Welcome to The Worst One, a show on the internet that some call, yeah, okay, and others call a human mess tries to think critically for 5 to 15 minutes. Here on the show, I like to look at a series of things, and I make what some may call jokes, and others call a desperate cry for help. Here on The Worst One, we could be talking about movies, books, childhood foods, or even those video games that you love so much. Today, however, we're going to be looking at the Goosebumps books. The original 62 written by R. L. Stein. The pieces of paper that made your childhood so spooky that you couldn't stop peeing your pants for weeks. <laughs> the original series also contributed to my absolute fear of Jeff Dunham, although I, I don't know if I can entirely blame the books on that. Oh god, get it away from me! There were a few choices for worst one, so I had to narrow it down a bit to figure out which of these books really bumped my geese. I got it narrowed down to four, and then one. Mind you, I didn't go through all 62 of these books page by page and hand out grades. I had enough of that from when I lived with a high school English teacher and helped her sift through freshman papers. They know when you make the periods a larger font. The three books that were bad, but not bad enough for me, were Chicken Chicken, wherein some kids knock over a witch's groceries and are anamorphed into chickens, How I Learned to Fly, where some kid flies because he's a nerd who reads books, and Night of the Lip- My Hairiest Adventure. Their dogs. Their dogs. And then kids. And then their dogs. Going through these three was awful, but none of them made me want to write a D-plus worthy video essay like Monster Blood 4. Monster Blood 4 is the fourth, the fourth book about monster goo that's really evil and lives in a can. Stein didn't even give Slappy the Dummy or the Haunted Not Jim Carrey's mask for books. I guess it's easier to build off of. R.L. Stein says he likes to write the title first, but was he so bereft of ideas by the end of the original run of books that he just four-fast, four-furious us instead? I mean, this is from the guy who scared me with his sink monster, so I shouldn't be too hard on him. Now before I dig into the book with you, I just want to make it clear. These books were for children. I get that. I'm not the type of guy who tries to get into bars by showing off his Mensa membership ID. I'm a moron, and I'm going to make fun of this children's book since it's something at my reading level. To get started on Monster Blood IV, we need to talk about the first three books a little. I just want to make sure you're caught up on the quadrilogy that is Monster Blood. The first book, the green goo is evil and wants to grow and eat. The second book has kaiju hamster wrestling. The third book, our hero Evan eats the goo and gets really big. In the third book, the real monster is man. But man who eats evil Nickelodeon slime? I mean, boy, really, but you know, whatever. These books even got a cool set in 1995 that came with a little container of green goo. Too bad 4 didn't make the cut. I mean, mostly because Monster Blood 4 came out in 97. I have to give it that. Monster Blood 4 starts with Evan thinking about Monster Blood. Monster Blood 2 also starts with Evan thinking about Monster Blood, but Monster Blood 4's first sentence is literally, or, you know, literarily, Evan Ross was thinking about Monster Blood. I mean, yeah, you would think he'd be pretty traumatized when it comes to the stuff, so uh, he's probably thinking about it a lot, honestly. As these stories go, Evan has to stay with his Aunt Dee and cousin Kermit because his parents are on vacation. Maybe when they get back, they'll bring him a fifth can of monster blood. You really think that something like this wouldn't be so easily obtainable, but I swear in universe they just sell this stuff at Target? They got that off-brand demon juice at Walmart. It's not the same. Evan's on his way to his aunt's place when they introduce the bully, Conan, who's a big beefy kid who beats on our boy. I have to mention this because the bully is a very important piece of our goo puzzle. If he, uh, if Conan hated popular things because they're popular, you think they'd call him Conan the Contrarian? <laughs> Evan arrives at his aunt's place after a little intervention by Kermit, and Kermit, Evan's cousin, is like one of those tropey science kids. You know the ones. Their mom gives them a bunch of household chemicals and beakers, and they just go to town on experiments that are borderline war crimes. Those ones. The type of kid that somehow sets up an invisible electric force field in his backyard because it's, it's a type of electric fence that works on dogs. Though those fences only work when the dogs are wearing a certain type of collar. 
That's right, children's book about living monster goo. I found a flaw in your logic. Kermit is also insufferable in this book. Or maybe he's just always been insufferable. I know he's supposed to take the kid who's crazy and wacky and zany about science, so he wants to play with the magic goo slot, but man, uh, all he does is torment Evan and act like King Chode, the chodiest of all chodes. Evan doesn't even do much in the way of trying to stop Kermit once he gets a hold of the monster blood because he's just hoping that if he whines enough about it, maybe it'll cause real psychic damage and stop Kermit. It doesn't. You can't stop Kermit. The Void won't even take him. After our little Kermit introduction, we meet Evan's friend Andy when she fakes him out twice about having the monster blood. Because, you know, it's a smart move. Messing with the kid who's traumatized about goo, Andy. Anyway, Evan has a spicy spaghetti-fueled nightmare about this satanic slime when he's woken up and wow, what do you know? Andy has real monster blood and she's definitely thinking about using an evil toxic substance to get back at our bully boy, Conan. Uh, great critical thinking skills, Andy. You've been through three of these books too. Shouldn't you know better by now? Wait, sorry, kids are dumb. Dummy dumb kids. Open the funny metal cylinder. Nothing bad will happen. Ha <laughs> ha. Something bad happens. The monster blood is now loose, and it's blue instead of green. What an interesting twist on the premise of evil goo. Make the goo blue. I wouldn't even mind if it was just monster blood but blue, but no, it's actually slug monsters. Slug monsters with big, juicy lips that probably taste like wax. I know what you did, Stein. You knew that no one cared about slug monsters, but you did. You just had to find a way to insert them into your scary verse, didn't you? And we all have to live with the consequences. The super scary slimy sludge slug sucks down a big sippy of water, and then explodes and multiplies in the backyard. Then it multiplies again, but this time it's meaner, I, I guess. That's the gimmick with this rare blue variant of the ominous ooze. It's multiplying slugs. It's... it's really it. All right. R.L. Stein always got me expecting more, but really just some multiplying slugs. You know what these slugs really need? The clear eye commercial guy. The eye drops guy. What was his name? Oh, yeah! Ben Stein. They need eye drops. It's a joke, ladies and gentlemen. When I was a kid, I thought the clear eye commercial guy wrote the Goosebumps books because his name, his last name is the same. It's spelled differently. The kids are forced to go back to bed before dealing with the monsters and wacky hijinks ensue the next morning. The slugs get all up into Kermit's hair growth formula, and then, then the kids try to kill the slugs with hot sauce. Because Evan's aunt really loves being spicy all the time, I guess. This is a household that has to budget extra for toilet paper. The slugs don't care about spicy juice, and they chase the kids through the neighborhood to eat them, I, I guess. Then the blobs all dogpile on our heroes, and end up eating each other instead. The scientist is is now there. He's, he's there. He's just like, whoa, what's going on? And he tells the kids that it, Blue Slime was a military experiment for uh, underwater combat. And the book ends with Conan the Bullybarian having eaten some of the slime because he thought it was candy. And now he's thirsty and multiplying, multiplying lugs. In comparison to the other books from the original Goosebumps lineup, I think that this one would have worked better if it didn't try to tie in the other Monster Blood books. And maybe if it was its own book, it would have come off a little less lazy. On one hand, I, I get it. It's easier to cover a story involving ooze if you already have a few books with an ooze-based premise. I mean, if I tried to write 62 almost consecutive books with original ideas every month, I'm sure that I would hit Nostalgia Critics the wall sooner or later. So I'll forgive one of the architects of my childhood for this one. But to me, this is still the worst Goosebumps book. Monster Blood 4 never received a reprint or an updated cover, nor did it ever show up in the Goosebumps television show or the movies. Even after Monster Blood 4, the last time that the original Monster Blood made an appearance was in Monster Blood for Breakfast, with an entirely different character, in the Goosebumps Horrorland series 11 years ago. I think it's safe to say that the multiplying slugs have been divided.